hello welcome back so today we are moving on to the waist decreases so we're going to be doing the shaping of the waist but before we go into that I wanted to have a little chat with you about a couple of things so first of all Anita hello Anita has kindly pointed out in the comments from yesterday's video that if you have enough yarn on your sleeves then you can actually it's easier for you to try it on so that's something worth remembering if your cable is long enough that you're not going to lose any of those stitches that means that when you get further down you can try it on just to see what length you want it if you wanted to change the length so i think that's well worth mentioning so thank you anita for that one also i wanted to talk to you before we go straight into the decreases i wanted you to think about is that the right thing for you so if you take a look at your pattern you will see on page four you will see that it shows how the decreasing comes in and it also shows what measurement it goes down to so what I wanted you to think about today is what shape is your body? What shape do you usually wear of a sweater? Do you like one that comes in or do you prefer a sweater that goes straight down? The reason I'm pointing this out is because the number of stitches we're on now is exactly the same as the number of stitches we're going to go back to on the hip measurement. So if you prefer just a straight down sweater, that means that you can just carry on straight and just miss out that section and just go to the length you want it to be. So you don't have to do the increases. It's not going to be, you've got to figure out maths later. It's going to be exactly the same amount of stitches. So what I just want to talk to you about is body shape for the moment. My body shape is a pair. So I have got, bad drawing, sorry, a little pin head. Then it's quite small at the top and then it all goes pear shaped further down. I like waist shaping because it keeps it similar at the top and then there's a bit more room further down for my hips. If I wear a boxy, there's this pattern that's very popular at the moment on the knitting podcast which is called the boxy. If I wear a boxy, I would look bigger because I'd lose that shape and so my waist would be the same width as my hips which would make my waist look bigger than it is so I love that shape I love it on other people but I know it's not the thing that I would actually wear so if you are a different shape so if you go straight down or if you have what they call an apple shape that looks nothing like an apple <laughs> I actually did art low level you would never guess would you so if you are more of an apple shape then what I want you to think about is take this measurement and think is that going to make it tight around your stomach because none of us want emphasis where we don't want emphasis so maybe you'd be better off straighter or if it's going to be okay for you then that will give the illusion of coming in and that's the thing that we want to have that silhouette well, I want to have that silhouette. I, I can't speak for you, sorry. <laughs> so I want to have that silhouette where it comes in and comes out and skims. So I, it covers up the bits I don't want to show off and it hi highlights the bits I do. So that's why I just want you to look in your wardrobe, think about the items you wear and think about how this is going to fit and perhaps measure it and think, do I want it to go in or do I want it to go in a little bit and not as much as that? So you've got that option as well. So you don't have to do all the de decreases. So yeah, I just wanted us to think about that. So you don't think the pattern says decrease, I've got to decrease. As long as you end up with the right amount of stitches on the other end, that's fine. So if this was a closer fitting sweater, I like the vintage looks where it's tighter then quite often I will actually go up a size after the waist and increase more because I know that what's going to fit me around the chest measurement is going to be too tight around the hips and I don't want it tight around my hips. So yeah, just take a moment to think about that before you start knitting because whereas if you buy something in a shop, you can take it back. We're putting time and energy into this and I want this to be a sweater that you're going to enjoy wearing and wear for a long time. So it's worth just taking a few minutes to think about that before you decide to move on. So once you have decided and if you want to do the decreases, let's turn the camera around and we'll start doing them.
Okay, so looking at the pattern, we need to decrease one stitch each side of the marker. And then if you look at the top of this page, we have got the decrease tips. It's advising us to work till three stitches remain before the marker. Knit two together and then knit one and then we'll slip the marker. And then on the other side of the marker, we'll knit one, slip one as if to knit knit one and then pass that over so that's what we're going to do next before we start i would also like to say that we're going to repeat these and it's going to be a measured repeat not how many rows i would advise you have six markers to leave in the work so you know where it is so you can either have these with the claw top so you can see that so you can take it out it's different from the normal just a ring it's got a claw clasp at the top or if you haven't got those already just a piece of thread with your needle again and we can just leave those in loosely and then take them out i should use both methods so you can see as i go how to use this but it's just so you know how many decreases you've done and where they are because you might not see them with this fluffy yarn so let's move on so first of all we're going to start at the beginning of the row and just knit around to the side. Sorry, because I've got the markers, it's going to clash on the table. So I shall speed this up till I get to three stitches before the marker. Okay, so here we are, three stitches before the marker. So now we're going to knit two together. Knit one. Pass that marker over. And then for the other one, we're going to knit one. Slip one knit way. So you put your needle in as if to knit, but then just slip it off knit one and then take that one you slipped and just pass it over the top and let it drop so now you had three stitches you've got two so this is where you want to attach the marker to say this is where you did your decrease so i'm just going to thread that through Tie a little knot, leaving plenty of gap so that when I cut it off later, I'm not going to be anywhere near the actual knitting. And then we just go round to the next side. Okay, so we are three before the marker once again. So we are going to knit two together. So just go through two, knit those two together, knit another one, pass that over, and then we're going to knit one, slip one as if knit wise, knit one, and then pass that slipped one, so the one behind the last knit stitch, over the top. And this time I'm going to use one of the other markers to show where it is. And then I'll know. If you've got a different yarn, it might be easier to see where your increases are. But with this yarn, it is quite camouflaged, so it is better to put a marker just so you know. So that is it. So then we just go round to the beginning of the row again. So if we look at the pattern, just to see what we will be doing, because it's just a repeat of that afterwards. It says, repeat this decrease every four and a half centimetres, two more times, which means it's three times in total. So we've just done the first time. So in between those decreases, you're just going to do knit rounds. And that's why we wanted to put a marker where we did decrease for when you measure 
because otherwise you might not be able to see it. So every time, just put another marker in for every three times. So we're just going to be carrying on knitting. Every whatever, check how far you need to go before doing the next marker. And yeah, we shall come back to when you have got to how many stitches you need. So I need to get down to 152 stitches. And then we will be back with the increases next time. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And yeah, it's coming along like an actual sweater now, isn't it? So we can see how it's taking shape. So thank you for joining me. Any questions, as always, please put them down below. So take care. See you again soon. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.